All right, so ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an impromptu Q&A session here. We have about roughly 30 minutes or so to kill. I just finished Resident Evil 4 for the second time ever. This time around in 2022, I liked the game way more than back in 2014. I guess it grew on me over the years after playing all these other Resident Evil games, and this time actually playing it in th uh, 60 frames per second on the Xbox Series X. <clears throat> I really had a ton of fun. So, excellent. And what we have is some extra time. Let's do an impromptu Q&A session. This one I will actually record. I actually do some every once in a while that are only a few minutes long and I don't record. But I said this one I'll record and I'll actually upload this to YouTube. Okay? So, let's get started. Let's see what people have to say. Um, let's see. Uh, how did I injure my back? Well, the thing is, I don't really know a definitive moment when I had the back injury. Uh, back in the 2000s, I started to notice things like my back would hurt every once in a while when I did physical activities. Um, I, By the way, I got overweight at one point, so that could have contributed to it. Um, but many factors. I, I only really noticed that I had a back injury. One day I was in a park playing uh, touch football with my friends. And these are the same friends who I used to hang out with and play Street Fighter with and everything. And we're just having fun. There was a cookout. We were having some beers. It was a good time. And when I went home, I was in excruciating pain. Now, I didn't fall. I didn't hurt anything on my body. It just, my back was in excruciating pain. And I thought, maybe I just wrenched a muscle or whatever. No, you know, what it is is that I guess I had gradually had this injury that was getting worse and worse. And I that was when I really had aggravated it and realized how bad it was. And it just got worse from there. Um, but as I was, when I was younger, I had back problems too. Like, I remember in school carrying my backpack around and having my back hurts, man, constantly. Stuff like that. So who knows? I could have been something from much younger in my life. I did get into a bad car accident when I was in high school. Maybe that could... Who knows, right? Who knows where it actually started? The good news is, it's really not a huge deal anymore. So that's a good thing. Okay. Let's see what questions people are asking. No, Kat has not tried the next set. She has not tried it yet. And she doesn't have any opinion on it because she didn't try it. Rambrot thinks I should do more old school games released before 2008. Lots of us were raised on those games. I believe you love Killer7, for example. No, and I'm, I'm okay with that. The thing is, as I've explained to you guys, which maybe, you know, maybe my modern viewing audience doesn't even know this about me. Because this is something that I used to talk about all the time back in the day. But I wasn't playing console video games at all on the regular from the years of like 2001 all the way through, like, 2007, 2008, because I was playing competitive Street Fighter. Like, at that time, the late 90s, early 2000s, I basically focused in all my free time on practicing Street Fighter and traveling to play Street Fighter. And at that time, I went all over the country, playing so many tournaments for so many different kinds of Street Fighter games that, throughout the years. And it wasn't until my back injury in 2007 to make a transition here where I couldn't really do that kind of heavy travel anymore. And I decided that instead I would actually focus in on getting back into console video games again. So around 2007, 2008, I started playing games like Mass Effect and Bioshock and Heavy Rain, not Heavy Rain, excuse me, um, GTA 4 and Blue Dragon, Lost Odyssey. I started playing all these games and saying, wow, video games have changed in the last seven, eight years since I was playing them on consoles. Look how they've expanded. Look how they've grown. Look at the stuff you can actually do in these games now. That's so crazy cool. And I was like, man, it really opened my eyes <clears throat> to what video games could do. And it got me hooked again. So, <clears throat> all those games from like the year 2000, not even, probably like late 90s, like 97, 98, all the way through like 2007, 2008, I missed out on most of them. I'm not even aware. That's why, why God, Phil played the GTA trilogy for the first time. Yeah, because I, I never played those games when they were new, you know. Okay. Uzi Gohart took me $1.50. He says, why don't you ever give details about the car accident? I've given details a million times. There's really not much to say. I was driving home from school on not really a highway, but they call it like an expressway. It's a two-lane narrow road, but everyone drives like like very fast on it. I think the speed limit is like 55. I had merged onto the road. I was trying to lane change left to the left lane. And as I was doing that, someone was driving literally like 100 miles per hour or more. I had to veer out of the way because he was about to rear end me, whoever it was. So I veered out of the way and overcorrected and bounced off the right uh, the right barrier and the car lost control and smashed into like an underpass and that was the end of it that's that's my car accident story there's not much to it of course i reported that to the officer and he's like well the problem is you have no evidence that someone was doing that and made you veer out of the way so you're responsible i was like oh it's great how the law works huh <laughs> so it's funny that you say that because i've talked about that story many many times over the years i don't know why you think i've 
Oh, never talked about it. Okay. Um, let's see here. You're welcome, Guts. He says, thanks for another fun playthrough. What should be people's first game who bought a PS5, says Eternal? I mean, PS5 right now has two major uses. Number one, playing really great versions of games that are cross-platform. And number two, playing exclusives. If there's an exclusive on there, like Ratchet & Clank or Returnal or Demon Souls, and you want to really play the exclusive, obviously that's the first thing you should go for. But for me, on these consoles, I'm getting a lot more use out of them for non-exclusives, right? Like the games that are cross-platform and playing, getting full 60 frames, full 1080p, you know, great controls and everything. Um, because honestly, Ratchet and Clank, I wasn't in love with, and I wasn't in love with Returnal either. I didn't think they were very great games compared to a lot of other games that were cross-platform last year. Just look at my Game of the Year awards if you want to get my full opinions on that stuff. Okay. Uh, Bob Harris is to me twenty dollars. Speaking of beers, what are your favorite drinks? I started getting into drinking Japanese whiskey. Now I can't understand why on earth anyone would want to go sober. <laughs> I've never. I don't think I've ever had Japanese whiskey. I've seen it. Like what Santori. I know Santori from that movie, uh, Lost in Translation, with Bill Murray. And then I actually saw it in a store. I was like, oh, shit, it's real? I never knew it was real. I thought it was just something made up for the movie. Um, <clears throat> but anyway, Bob, um, my favorite drinks. Honestly, do I have a favorite, favorite drink? No. I don't really like beer that much these days. I find that beer kind of, it's too filling, too much calories, and it makes me feel bloated. And I, I sometimes, like, for example, I used to drink beer during my marathons that I do like Christmas Marathon, and by the end of the marathon, I have like a stomach ache. I wouldn't feel good. So if I'm going to have a drink, I usually just have a mixed drink, and there's so many different good mixed drinks out there. Of course, everyone laughs when I say gin and tonic because people think for some reason that all I do is sit around drinking gin all day, which isn't true. There's idiots. But gin is great. Um, if you get a good one and you mix it with something refreshing, like gin with, with uh, mint or something like that, very good. Um, margaritas, and there's so many different ways to have a margarita. Lime, or melon, or straw strawberry margarita is good. Or, you know, more citrusy. You know, there's so many different mar types of margarita that are good, too, depending on the level of, of tequila you're putting in it. Um, I used to have rum and coke a ton. I really don't drink it anymore. I, I used to drink it so much back in the day, I stay the fuck away from it. Um, Moscow mules are pretty good. Um... Really? Oh, you know what I like to do? There's one restaurant I like to go with and always get a Mai Tai. Because their Mai Tai is, like, giant. They give you this huge drink. And not to say that the, the flavor of the Mai Tai is insanely good or whatever, but when you get a giant drink, it's fruity, but you also get some run flavor in there. That's pretty good. But I don't have, like, a staple go-to drink that I would always do. When I go out, I just look what's on the menu if I'm going to have a drink, by the way. Because a lot of the times I don't. A lot of the times if I go out, I don't drink because I'm driving. But every once in a while, you treat yourself, right? And then it just depends on what I feel like. So, so thank you, Bob, very much for that tip. That got us to the, the glasses goal for tonight. So thank you very much for that. We're at $62 in tips and climbing. Thank you for the support. Have I ever had Jägermeister and Red Bull back in the days? I had Jägermeister. I never had it with Red Bull. Uh, but I've had Jägermeister. And it's funny because, like, if you think about the flavor of Jägermeister, it's kind of gross. But it's not bad. Like, I've had it, and it's like, wow, everything about this would tell me I wouldn't like it. But for some reason, I had it, and I liked it. I never had too much of it, though. Eternal, I've never had a White Russian before. In fact, I don't even know what's in a White Russian. I've never had one before. Well, I do the old X-Men Legends game, someone just asked. Uh, I think I did. I think I played X-Men Legends 1 and 2 as co-op playthroughs a long, long time ago with John Rambo. I'm almost pos a positive that as he was coming over once a week for like two, three years when we were doing co-op constantly, that those were games that we did full playthroughs of. Would I play them solo? No, nah, those are co-op games. Just like the Marvel Ultimate Alliance series, it's definitely meant to be co-op games. Okay. <laughs> oh, yes. Jeffrey says, I imagine Seattle has a huge craft beer culture. Yes. When you go to certain restaurants, like there's actually a place at the local mall called BJ's. All the beers, they're craft beers. They're all made specifically for that chain. They're all different oh you have a, a pilsner an ale a red ale a yellow ale a belgian ale a pale ale a dark and then you have the dark ones right the ones that are full of the hops and the fucking head and everything and you can get all different custom made ones there that they make just for their chain and then of course yeah when you go to the liquor store out here oh my god you go to the beer section it's like all ales from seattle and oregon they're all from out here it's crazy how many local ales there are out here but i don't like beer like i said i really don't like beer i find it too filling too many calories 
I don't want to sit here. Here, let me put it to you this way: If you are looking to have a drink and get a buzz, would you rather have one or two small drinks where you drink it, it tastes pretty good, strong, but it tastes pretty good, you get a buzz within you know one or two drinks, you're feeling good, or oh, I want beer, so now you drink beer, beer, beer. Beer. Okay, now I drank like three or four. Finally, I'm feeling like a good buzz. But now you drank so much fucking beer, you're bloated as shit. You got piss. I don't like that. I don't like that. Liza first sold to me $1.87 asking, can I follow him on Twitter? He'll love me forever. I'll think about it. Thank you for the tip. We're now at $63 in tips. Thank you, guys. Okay. Oh, let's see here. Would I ever play DayZ in the future? Probably not. DayZ had its time. A long time ago. It's an incredibly outdated game at this point. Uh, I don't even know why anyone would actively play it besides nostalgia purposes. I really doubt I would ever go play it. Carlos, we, we usually don't listen to music on our days off. When we're driving around, we usually don't have music playing in the car. Uh, at one point, we did, and we used to listen to all kinds of different stuff. We listen to music from around the world. We used to listen to, yes, K-pop at one point, but we haven't listened to music actively like that in a very long time. No, I'm not missing, mixing NyQuil with a 7-Eleven slushy, you disgusting freak. Okay, here's an idiot. Let's ban him because he thinks he's funny. He's just dumb. <laughs> okay. Out of all the JRPGs I played, which among them are my favorites? Classics would be like Final Fantasy 4, 5, and 6, Chrono Trigger, Earthbound, and the Suikoden series. And Wild Arms as well. More modern, I would say Blue Dragon, <clears throat> excuse me, Lost Odyssey, uh, Tales of Vesperia, um, and then getting to more modern, Dragon Quest XI, Yakuza 7, um... That kind of stuff. There you go. Can I play Power Rangers Battle for the Grid? Asked Jade. Jade, so here's the thing. We tried it out as a Game Pass game over the summer of last year. I liked playing it for like the hour or so that we played it. I thought it was something interesting. But the only way you're going to learn how to play that game is to invest a lot of time in it. It has its own mechanics. It has its own thing going for it. And quite frankly, I don't think I want to. Like, I don't think I want to learn a new game, a new game engine, for a game that really doesn't have much of a following online. I've heard that basically it's kind of dead. Like, it had a following at one point when it first came out years ago, and then it never really got any kind of mainstream attention. It wasn't ever at any major tournaments as a big competition or anything like that. So I'd much rather invest more time in a game that's more modern, like King of Fighters 15 coming up next month. That'll give a look. But I don't think I'm going to go play in Battle for the Grid for very long. Carlton Jr. says, I agree Resident Evil 4 is better than 5, but 5 was funner with a friend. It's hard to draw that perfect line between harmless fun and quality. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. Like, Resident Evil 5 is a perfectly fine and fun game, especially if you're doing it co-op with someone over the internet. That was how they designed it. But much like Dead Space 3, when you add in the factor of someone else playing it with you, you actually negate some challenge, and therefore it makes it less scary. Like, the Resident Evil franchise up to that point always had that feeling of you're alone, you're isolated, you're at risk, you have low ammo, enemies can come out of anywhere, including the sky, your, the ground, out of your ass, and at any point you could get mobbed or overwhelmed, and that was the feeling of ominous, you're on your own kind of deal that made it very scary. Resident Evil 5 and 6 is like total co-op, I got your back, bro, you know what I mean? And by the way, they're not bad games, but they just don't have that, that classic survival horror feeling anymore. I think that's why a lot of people don't really like them that much, or at least don't like them as much as the classics, you see? Ghost of Jay says you played every Silent Hill except Origins. Are you going to play that? Origins. Did I not play Origins? Really? I never played Origins. That's true. Because I, I, I thought the only one that I hadn't played was the one Shattered Memories, the one with the ice mechanic on the Wii. And I tried to play that in a Halloween marathon a few years ago, and it didn't even work right. It was a piece of shit. The motion control sucked shit, and I never wanted to play it after that. So I don't know if what you're saying is correct or not. I swear I played Silent Hill Origins at one point. <clears throat> uh, Marxist Carl did a Super Jazz says, what was your favorite cuisine out of all your feasting with the king so far? Oh, man, uh, Mediterranean. When I had that... What was it? The um, the chickpea, the fried chickpea ball thing. I can't remember what it's called. But I had that and I put it into the hummus. That was so fucking good. Like, that's like the amazing combination of flavor. That's like over-the-top crazy good flavors. I couldn't believe how good it was. I can't remember what it's called now. But I would definitely like to have that again someday. Yes, falafel. That's what it's called, Biohazard Fallout. Falafel. 
Lives were sold at another $4.20 tip and says, Do you ever roll a quick J with the boys and watch documentaries that make you contemplate life? No. I have smoked pot when I was a teenager. That was the last time I did it. <laughs> okay. Colton Jr. says, Crazy to think how every game back then was co local co-op. People basically were tired of that and then no games are local co-op anymore. It's a shame. Yeah, if you remember. And it was weird because it was actually very advantageous. During the time frame when I was starting to become a full-time YouTuber from the years to say, you know, twenty late 2010 through like 2013, there was a lot of local co-op games that came out and John Rambo and I were played a ton of them. And then of course we played some classics too, like the Warriors and X-Men Legends and stuff like that. But there was a lot of opportunities for co-op back then. What we would do... <clears throat> We do one of two things. If it was a local co-op on one TV, we'd do it together split screen. But a lot of games, you could do co-op on your own network. So what you would each do, you would log in as Xbox Live, but you would immediately just connect right there. And the connection would be really good because you're sitting next to each other. It's just the two of you and the server. There's no other distance. So it's like a great connection. So we would do online co-op in person. He would have a TV and sit in the chair here, and I would have my TV and sit on the couch here, and we would each have our own setup doing co-op games. That's how we played all of Dead Space 3, which really worked out really well. So, um, yeah, that was really, that was cool times, man. That was all co-op. It was so much co-op at that time. No, I've never played Phasmophobia. Jack, Mac Jerfy did a Super Jazz. Favorite arcade fighter other than Street Fighter? Oh, uh, the King of Fighters. I played probably Street Fighter games, like the classics, as well as the, the Versus series of games, such as X-Men vs. Street Fighter, Marvel vs. Capcom, and then the Street Fighter 3 series are the ones that I played the most, although I did play a lot of Alpha back in the day as well. But if you want to completely veer away from Capcom fighting games and talk just about other other companies that made games, I played a lot of Mortal Kombat, but actually the one I liked the most was the King of Fighters because it combined fighters and fighting styles from all the SNK franchises into one and added and extrapolated upon it in a lot of ways. And I really liked that. So, yeah. Uh, so hopefully, soft to the Super Chats. Do you speak to your neighbors or are you antisocial? If I see my neighbors, I'll say hello. And yes, every once in a while, I'll have a friendly conversation with them. We have an email address uh, where we can communicate uh, with each other for important things that are like, you know, the business of this condo association and stuff like that. But do I directly... Am I super friendly with any of them? No. And in fact, almost no one is. Here... It's basically a lot of people just having private lives, and that's a good thing. That's why you move to a private community, honestly. Uh, Liza Versol did another tip, $4.20. Can I challenge you for the YouTube World Gaming Championship? Yes, you can. <clears throat> Thank you, Liza Versol, for the tip. Soul Calibur 2 or 3? Uh, I Honestly, I don't really remember the difference, Ramrod. Um... I remember Soul Calibur 1 was insanely good, and I played it on the Dreamcast, and it was a crazy good game at the time. It had so much content. That was like the first home fighting game that had a whole campaign. Most fighting games didn't. It was just arcade mode or play against people in versus mode. That was all the content they had, and that game had a full-on story-based campaign and stuff. It was really cool, um, but I don't remember the difference between 2 or 3. I couldn't answer that, but I will tell you, Nightmare is awesome. There you go. Yes, I'm going to the dump tomorrow because of the trash issues to throw out my fucking trash. Yes. What are you excited me the most for games next month? I mean, be, let's think about all the games next month. Off the top of my head, Sifu, Dying Light 2, Horizon Forbidden West, King of Fighters 15, Elden Ring. Okay? Out of all the games that month, personally for me, two games. King of Fighters 15 and Elden Ring. Why those two? Because one's a fighting game. I haven't played a new fighting game in a very long time. It's a fighting game franchise that I have history with. And the funny thing is, I guarantee you, my gameplay of King of Fighters 15 will not get much attention at all. Most people don't come to me for fighting game stuff. They don't see me as anyone as an authority or a guru or anything on fighting games. There'll be a casual audience for it, but it's not going to be a huge thing. For me, I'm actually excited to play a new fighting game at launch. I am. And Elden Ring, I think you know why. Some of the best games I've played over the years from software franchise when it comes to Bloodborne or Dark Souls or Demon Souls, replaying those games multiple times, different builds, explore. The real awesome part, even if you get your butt squished into paste over and over by a tough fucking boss, right? There's a feeling of accomplishment when you beat it. There's a feeling of like wonderment when you solve a oh, an illusory wall with something behind it. Oh, that's cool, right? 
that's the initial runs you do in those games are so much fun. And it's also fun to watch me fail miserably in the game, which you know I'm going to suck shit. You know I'm going to lose a million times and rage. It's going to be super entertaining, right? And unlike Sekiro, this is an actual, it's going back to its roots. The game kind of plays like Dark Souls. So that's good. You guys love watching me play Dark Souls. Basically, we're getting Dark Souls 4. So, awesome, right? So there you go. Which platform am I getting King of Fighters on? Same with Elden Ring. Well, El Xbox Series X is what my choice will be for cross-platform games whenever there's a benefit. And the benefit right off the bat is surround sound. I will get true surround sound playing new releases on my Xbox Series X. I only get simulated fake stereo plus plus from the PS5 because it doesn't have dual audio out. So, yeah, if there's a direct opportunity to pick, I'm going to go for Series X every time like literally every fucking time okay but obviously horizon that's a sony exclusive i'll be playing that on ps5 as for king of fighters here's here's a game it doesn't matter the game doesn't even have surround sound it's a fighting game so what do i need for that nothing i i guarantee you king of fighters 15 would run just as well on playstation as it does on xbox okay and now i have a joystick for both consoles awesome so now the question really is, what console has a benefit over the other, if there even is a difference? And what will, 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 uh, where will most of the player base be? And I don't know the answer to that. I don't know if more people will buy this for Xbox or PlayStation 5 or vice versa. What I may do, initially buy one version, play it, and then maybe eventually... If there's enough demand, meaning let's say I play the game for a week or two and people really like the coverage, they want more and it's getting support, then maybe I'll buy the other version too. All right. But I'm not going to do that initially, especially if I don't even know people are going to like it and, and, and want me to keep playing it. So we'll see. Remember what happened? I got burned bad with King of Fighters 14. I bought it. I played it. I liked it. And within two weeks, the game was completely dead. You could only find like the same 10 people playing it online. I was like, wow, what a waste of my fucking time that was. So I hope we don't have that situation again. <laughs> Guts, I'll see you Tuesday. Sounds good. I don't know what you mean, MM, about playing anime games. I don't even know what that means. There's no such thing as anime games. He says, are you open to play anime games in the future? What? That doesn't make sense what you're saying. Like, what does that even mean? Is there a style of game that has looks like anime? Do you mean a, a, game, a specific game that's based on an anime? I have no clue what you're talking about. All right. It looks like things are starting to calm down. If you guys have more questions, please throw them my way. I still have time. I'm in no rush. But if the questions are kind of slowing down, uh, you know, then it's probably time to get out of here. We'll see. Thank you guys for the support. I appreciate that. After we finished Resident Evil 4 early, you guys did support this Q&A session for the last 20 minutes or so. Last chance if you would like to contribute, you know, last probably 10, 15 minutes here, if that. Haseo X says, I think by anime he means like Demon Slayer or Sword Art Online. See, I don't even know what those games are. What the hell is that? <laughs> so the answer there, I guess, would be no. See, now Carlton Jr. says, I imagine he means games like Guilty Gear and Arxis games. See, this is why he has to... He has to Give me more information. I hear to say anime games. I don't even know what that means. I need more info to answer the question properly. No, I have no interest in crypto assets for many different reasons. It's unstable, and you could lose all of the value of what you've invested because that just the, the fucking currency value drops. Tax-wise, it's a nightmare. I've actually heard that taxes with crypto are just a pain in the dick. So, fuck that. How is the weather in Washington? It is pretty good. It's been in the 40 degrees Celsius range for the past week or two, and there's been rain on and off. And uh, it's been nice. Like, ever since the snow went away, it's been pretty nice and typical moderate winter-style weather that we usually get here every year. <clears throat> Carlos says, NVIDIA says the video card shortage will ease in the second half of the year when they release new models where you wait until then to upgrade. For me, Carlos, the factor is thus. I need to be able to have a time frame that if I'm going to do an upgrade to my hardware setup, that it doesn't hinder the content. 
If I'm in the middle of five major high-profile AAA games in February, not a good time to say, oh, let's change everything. Let's change the PC, the setup. Now there are a million technical issues and bugs and things that fuck up, and now I can't put out content consistently. That would be a stupid idea. So what I'm going to do is wait until there's a dull time of the year where there's a lull in new releases and everything, and then it will be way more safer to try new things. Now, there's a lot of factors. Do I have enough money to even do it myself? Will people offer to help already? Like I said, last year, around the end of the summer, early fall, people were offering. Some people, some people, One guy was like, I'm willing to buy you all the parts to build your own PC. We just got to talk about what parts you want. Someone else was like, I will literally buy you a pre-built PC. And I was like, wow, I really appreciate these offers. It's so generous. But I didn't want to mess with it right before the busy hardcore gaming season when I knew there were so many new releases coming out in the fall. You don't want to fuck around and now have to try to learn how to redo everything when you need to be putting out tons of playthroughs back to back to back, you see? So, there is no way uh, that I can sell you anything now. What we'll do, let's, go to, let's get to February. Let's play all the new releases. Let's enjoy them. Let's see how long they take to beat. Maybe around March, April, then we can reassess the situation. How are we doing with releases? How's this gaming schedule looking? Is there a big scheduled lull in releases? And then I can maybe say, hey guys who, you know, contacted me last year, if you're still interested in helping out, I'm let's talk. I'm willing to discuss it now. Let's let's see. Because the truth of the matter is, I don't know enough about PCs in 2022 to make any kind of intelligent decisions. I have been out of the loop on PC building and PC components for the longest time. I would not want to be sitting here having 20 boxes arrive oh here's your motherboard here's your ram here's your processor here's your graphics card here's your capture card here's this here's that everything arrives i'm not gonna build this fucking thing i haven't done this in like 20 years how do i even know i don't want to fuck it up especially it's even worse when it's not your own stuff like if i buy it and i fuck it up all right it's on me what if someone donates all this expensive shit and then i break it <laughs> you know i feel like an asshole we'll see what happens <clears throat> we'll see what happens. <laughs> Jeffrey says, honestly, buying pre built is the only way to guarantee your parts nowadays. And I think you're right. I think right now, uh, I if I was to get a new PC, it would have to be a pre built. <clears throat> Carlton Jr. now asks, will I be playing WWE 2K22? Will Fantasy Sims come back? I don't know. Here's why. It supposedly comes out the first week of March. Did you know that? It's like March 8th. Guess how much gameplay we've seen of the game? Zero. Guess how much information we actually have about modes except for that one mode that they mentioned. I think it was like GM mode or whatever. Zero. We don't know shit. Why? Because the fucking game has to keep being remade because they keep releasing wrestlers. So they probably had the game like ready to go in the fall and then they released half the fucking roster over the course of 2021 which had to make them go back and remake. Go back and remake. You know, these guys are gone. Gotta add new characters. These guys are gone. Gotta add new characters. They can't ever finish it. You know what I'm saying? So, it's supposed to come out. We don't know anything about it. If I get it and we like it, yeah, Sims will definitely come back. But the thing is, the Sims that I used to do in WWE 2K were themed. Like, for example, the Christmas Sims, right? And the Christmas Sims were super fun because it was simulating, like, the, like you know, uh, you know, wrestling during the holidays or whatever and having fucking fantasy characters wrestle for the King of Christmas belt and shit like that. That was funny. But just to do random Sims for no reason in the middle of the year, I don't know if that would work. I think it has to have, like, a theme to it. We'd have to see. And uh, by the way, there's no guarantee it would even fucking work. There's no guarantee that you buy the game and The Sims would even work. Because last time around, when we, I, they didn't work. I bought it. I played the game. And it was like, yeah, you can't even down. You try to download a created character, the whole game crashes. You try to load a created character, the whole game locks up. And it was just unplayable. So. <clears throat> okay. Anything else, guys? Still got a little bit of time. If anyone has more questions or whatever, thanks again for chilling with me tonight, and thank you for your support tonight. I appreciate it. you guys did a lot of likes on the stream, almost 100 likes on this late stream, which is nice. Uh, viewership's been good, and, you know, tips came out of nowhere. We went from $4 in tips to $71 in tips, and I appreciate that. So thank you, guys. Will I ever play Shimogami Tensei Five? Not likely. Not likely because of Atlas. They claim the fuck out of everybody. So I don't want to risk having my livelihood get negatively affected by a company that doesn't doesn't do the right thing. They just claim whatever, fucking copyright strikes. I don't think it's worth it at all. I'll see you Tuesday, Jade. You have a good night, man. Good to see you here today.
We oh we did hit hundred likes. I said that and more likes came in. We got hundred one likes now. Cool. Among the new games, what's the first one coming out? I think it's Sifu because Sifu originally was supposed to come out around the middle of the month, which I even said like two three months ago. I was like, if Sifu comes out in the middle of the month, no one's playing it. Seriously, like it'll be so eaten up by the other higher profile releases, you'll have so few sales. So they purposely bumped it back. So now you've got Pokemon Legends Arceus coming out January 28th. And then like within just a few days, the first few days of February, we got Sifu. Then I believe it's Dying Light 2. Then I think the next week it's Horizon Forbidden West. Then I think the next week it's King of Fighters. And then I think at the, at the last or next last week of the month, it's Elden Ring. I think that's how, the, how it's coming out. So... Will the Final Fantasy VII OG playthrough ever happen? Asked Elevation. It's really up to the viewership. I wanted to play the game two, three years ago. And people voted for everything else under the sun but that. Like, I seriously, I wanted to play Final Fantasy VII. And then people voted for... Uh, was it Final Fantasy IX? There was two opportunities where I was gung-ho wanted to play Final Fantasy VII before the Final Fantasy VII remake came out. And both times that we had an opportunity for it to happen, people voted for something else. And then, then we played the Final Fantasy VII Remake, and we were like, fuck, I wish I had played original Final Fantasy VII because the game had so many effing references. It's like it was a prerequisite to even really understanding what was in it because they changed the plot, which no one expected them to do. The ending made no sense because I hadn't played Final Fantasy VII recently and couldn't really remember the references they were making. Um, and then since then, guess what? We have opportunity. We do player's choice. We do all that. Guess what? Never gets nominated. Never. No, I don't think anyone really, honestly, cares about original Final Fantasy VII. I hate to say that because I actually like the game. I think that the gameplay is great and it has one of the best engines, fighting game, or excuse me, or RPG fighting engines, like the combat. I really like the turn-based combat in Final Fantasy VII. I think it's outstanding. It's one of the most addictive things about the game. But I don't think people really care about it or they would have asked for it by now, man. It's been so long. No, I'm not ever playing Cyberpunk again. I don't know why people continuously ask me this question every few months. Are you going back to Cyberpunk? No, it's a terrible fucking game. But what about if they... No. But they're going to update... No. DLC... No. How about... It? No. How about this? I thought about it. N-O. No. What happened? Wait a minute. Oh. This only works... Oh, wow. That's hilarious. This only works... When I'm in 480p. So because I'm in 1080p, it zooms in on a different part and it doesn't work. Well, it didn't work. It'll only work during gameplay. Darn. Well, now at least I know that. Now at least I know that it'll only work during gameplay. So, no! I'm not playing Cyberpunk. The game fucking sucks. It sucked when it was new. It sucks now. It'll suck when they fix it. If they ever do, it'll always suck. The core gameplay elements suck. The core plot mostly sucks. There's a few parts of it that are decent, but most of it sucks. The game itself is lifted from the lore someone else created, steals gameplay elements from other universes, and tapes them together. The fucking universe is immature and boring as fuck. It sucks. The game, shitty. It fucking sucks. Stop asking me about playing it. I'm never gonna play it. It sucks. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Will I ever upgrade the sound box? Well, my my plan is when I do upgrade my PC, whenever that may be, and I get the latest Windows, I can actually start using my my uh, Stream Deck over there, which I have had for a million years. Right? Is that what it, is it called? A Stream Deck? Yes, it's called a Stream Deck. Right? It's that little. It's the the device that has like all these colored buttons you program. When you press them, they do stuff. I can use it for a scene transition. I can have a funny sound play. I can have a new video clip play. And I want to program that so I can actually have it here and actually use it to do stuff while I'm while I'm actually doing shit on the stream. But I can't do it because it needs upgraded Windows, and I'm using a PC from 2014 that is stable, and I want to fuck with it and put new Windows in it and destroy the thing. So there you go. I have no thoughts about games coming out in Unreal Engine 5 because there are no games out in Unreal Engine 5. Oh, that was a tech demo of a Matrix game that's not a game that doesn't exist. Once we actually start getting real games in it and we see what it looks like, then I'll comment. Well, I'll be playing the new Kirby at the end of March. It's Carlton Jr. It looks like uh, Mario Odyssey. Didn't it, it just get announced, right? Didn't it, like, just get announced? 
And that sounds, I, I like Kirby, but I feel like with my, with my viewers, that would work as maybe like a late night chill stream, especially if it's not very challenging because the most Kirby's are super easy games. Uh, I'm not opposed to it. I'm open to it. I'd consider it. Let's put it that way. Excuse me. Dark Maggot, my PC doesn't have Windows 10. My PC over here is running on the same Windows that it came with in 2014. And that's why it's fucking stable as shit. You notice, my I never say, oh, my PC crashed. Now we can't stream today. Or oh, oh, the only thing that will happen is every once in a while the mic will malfunction. But outside of that, you notice there's no problems ever. This setup is the, I'm not kidding you. For what's hilarious about it is when I got this in 2014, everyone made fun of me and said, ha ha, Phil got ripped off, he got a lemon, because look, he's trying to do gaming and capturing at the same time and it doesn't look good, the frame rate's dipping. But this has been the most solid PC I've ever owned in my life. It barely ever has an issue. Almost never. Every other PC I've owned before this one, crashes, issues, corruption, you know, all kinds of shit. I never had that problem with this PC. It's it's literally the best one I've ever had. It just sucks it's so outdated I can't do new stuff with it, you know? Um, Life's ever sold to another $4.20. Says, can I do the novelization of your last 10 years as a content creator? I'll split it 7.30 your way. Yes. Thank you. Wow, now we're at $75 in tips. I don't know what GPU it has. It's it's for, it's fucking eight nine years old. I don't care. I'm not gonna start looking at the stats of my eight nine year old computer now. <laughs> it's old. I'm when I'm streaming and capturing, and it's saying it's at ninety five percent CPU use, and then the stream starts to pixelate and chop up. I need something new. It's that simple. Is the red computer chair I have new, and if so, is it any good? What red computer chair? You mean the chair I've had over there since 2018? That's a piece of shit that broke within one year, and every time I sit on it, it goes, decompresses. It's a fucking piece of garbage. What are you talking about? <laughs> People have the weirdest questions. You do open Q&A, you never know what you're going to get. Sometimes you'll get the most insightful, interesting questions. You'll get ideas as a result of doing it. And you're like, wow, this is a great session. I'm glad I did it. And sometimes it's like, I don't know what the fuck people are thinking. Happy Tart did a super chat. So why the harsh language towards your fans? Be nice. Okay, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me toss some confetti and and, and uh, glitter up in the air. I'll have a big rainbow come across. Unicorn flying by. That'll be a great stream, right? A fucking My Little Pony stream. What are you talking about? Do you know who I am? <laughs> have you ever seen my content before? Ever. In the history of me making content. Holy crap. Hoy. So, Symbol Bubble says, Why are indie games underrated and never included in major streams for your content anymore? Alright, there's two reasons why this is happening. First of all, it's not true. There are indie games featured, but I agree with you. They're few, few, eh, few and far between. Number one reason. It's because, sadly, whenever I play something like that, it usually doesn't get traction. I'll play it and people be like, what the fuck is this? What are you playing? Why are you playing it? Seriously, why aren't you playing the other major releases? You're taking time away from playing all these major releases, AAA giant games, to play this game no one's ever heard of. Literally, that's the reaction I get a lot of the times from my viewing audience if I try to do something like that. That's number one. Number two, quite frankly, there's just too many of them. There's so many indie games out there these days that they all just jumble themselves and then you don't know what's good and what's not. Like, for example, Hades. Hades, when it came out, no one knew it was good. It took many, many months of people playing this game in pre-release, full release, then finally started to get some traction, word of mouth, it grew. Then finally, after like a year of it being out on PC, it started getting console releases and people started playing it on consoles and realizing how good it was and it took me how many years to play it and I love it. But that's what I mean. Like, it seems like this is the case with these indie games. When there's so many of them coming out constantly, and you hear a few people say, ah, oh, this is kind of good, it's kind of good. You don't know what to trust what's good or what's not. There's too much white noise out there about what's good and what's not, and you don't know what to trust. It, back in the day, it wasn't like that. There weren't, every week, there weren't 27 new games coming out back in the day. It was like every week, maybe there's two, three tops, and that includes indie games. So you could pick and choose what you wanted to play. And it made sense. Now it's like, who fucking knows? Every day there's 20 fucking pieces of shovelware coming out. 
But I will say this. A, a good thing about Game Pass, it gives me the opportunity to check out a lot of these style of games that normally I wouldn't want to drop money on. Like that game Last Stop last year from Annapurna Interactive, the narrative-based game. I never would have played that game without Game Pass, and we enjoyed it thoroughly. I mean, it was weird as shit. It had a weird ending. But man, I'm happy that I played it on Game Pass. It was a fun time, you see? So Game Pass will give us the ability to check out games that normally would be like outside of your comfort zone or maybe even a risk to buy or play, but to be able to enjoy them and not have to worry about that risk factor of, of investment, you see? RC Young said, I need to try Forgotten City one of these days. If you like RPGs like Oblivion, Skyrim, you'll like to, you'll love it. Didn't people say that Forgotten City originally was a mod for Skyrim and then they changed it around to be its own game? Sounds interesting. <clears throat> All right, now the questions are just getting ludicrous, so I think it's about time. I'll give you one last chance, anyone. If you want to ask a final question, do it now. But outside of that, I'm just going to say goodnight because this is ridiculous. As you can tell what happened is the good questions are done. Now people are just being silly. So, Eternal says, I think Sony will do a Game Pass of their own. Eventually, something similar. Because right now, they are losing market share to, to Xbox because no one could buy a PlayStation 5. So what they need to do is release something, right? That's going to say, oh, here's the other reason. You can't get a PS5 right now. We all know that. So you can't base their profits off of sales. What they need to do is find a new service that everyone who has a PS5 now will get. Then they'll start raking in dough. They don't have that right now because most people don't want PS now. What they need to do is get a service that maybe is backwards compatible with a ton of the old games for PS1, PS2 era, and start having them be playable on PS5 just like they are these uh, legacy Xbox games are on Xbox Series X. And all of a sudden, boom, every PS5 owner will, will get it, 20 bucks a month, and that's money right into the pocket of Sony. They got to do it. I feel that they have to do it. That's right. There's so there, there's so much demand for PS5, but so little supply. They started making PS4s again. Now imagine if they have a service that you can play PS1 and PS2 games on PS4. Well, I can't play PS5 because I can't find one, but I can play the old games for fifteen dollars a month. I'll do that. See, then everyone's happy. No, I agree with everyone. People who seen it were like, "Yeah, Xbox got it right this gen." I I love it. Right. <clears throat> um. I absolutely love it. Xbox Series X, ever since I got it in the late summer last year, I've loved every moment playing the console. The only complaint I have is that the st I have a sticky trigger. The right trigger kind of sticks. But outside of that, the console's outstanding. Surround sound out of the box, ease of use in the menus, uh, Game Pass is outstanding value. Achievements that I'm used to from Xbox 360 era popping up constantly. Like Everything about it, I don't have a complaint. I love the console, man. All right, everyone. I think it's time to call it a night. Thank you all for being a great audience. Whether you were here for the finale of Resident Evil 4 or whether you stuck around here for this nice impromptu Q&A, either way, I appreciate your support and chilling with me. Thank you guys so very much. It was great, right? All right. Guys, thank you. Um, Until next time. When will that be? In a couple of days because I got tomorrow off. All right? Cool. Thanks. <laughs>